Hello, this is Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. Hi, this is Dave Garn from Depeche Mode, and you are listening to My Nerd World. It is My Nerd World, and welcome to a Depeche Mode, the podcast, and I am your host, John Justice. Glad you are with another episode this week, and this is an exciting one. I'm, I've been really looking forward to... This episode um, all week, all week long. I've got some fantastic information to share with you, not just official information that's been released uh, just over the course of the past few hours, but I've had the opportunity, that's all I'm going to say, I've had the opportunity to hear a handful of tracks beyond Ghost Again, and I'm going to share with you my first impression of those songs. I'm excited for this record. Let me just say that right up front. From what I've heard, this is going to be a fantastic album. Will it rise to the greatness of what so many of us hold on to in that era from you know Black Celebration, Music for the Masses, Violator, Songs of Faith and Devotion? You know, I think that's going to be up to you. It's always subjective, right? The tracks that I've heard from this album so far, um, in my opinion, and this is just, again... This is a cursory listen, not the entirety of the album, um, but enough to get a vibe of of the record beyond Ghosts Again. Uh, at this point, I'm I'm kind of confident to say this might be their best album since Songs of Faith and Devotion. Um, going back to to Ultra, um, I really, really am liking what I'm hearing, and it's difficult to kind of pin down um, comparisons to previous albums. So I don't want to jump too far. Ahead of myself, I do have a few items that I want to get to uh, before I give you my uh, my thoughts and the descriptions of the songs that I have heard. First off, let's go ahead and start with um, a little bit of news. Now, I was expecting to get some remixes today, and we may still. Last time I checked, I haven't seen the official single to drop on iTunes yet. Uh, but that is the expectation this week that we should get sort of the official single release for ghosts again that'll include remixes and we were told at one point in time that it would have some b-sides as well but i'm still waiting for that to happen however the official accounts for depeche mode did announce today as was expected and teased um new north american tour dates uh they've added 29 additional dates for a total of i believe at this point in time unless my unless my uh, math is wrong um, 75 dates total for this tour to run through December of this year, ending in Los Angeles, California. Now, I'm not going to run through the entirety um, of the additional dates. I encourage you to go and, and find those. They've been released on Instagram and on the official um, Twitter account for uh, for the band as, uh, band as well. I'm bummed they're still not coming to Minneapolis. They did add another date for Chicago, which is the closest to where I live here on a Monday night, much later in the year. I believe it's in November. So uh, there's also the additional, a, a lot of additional Los Angeles dates that I'm kind of eyeballing um, in the end of the tour specifically. I think the last show I may try to get to December 15th, since that falls right on what would be my um, my Christmas vacation time. So uh, and again, this is just a personal uh, from a personal standpoint because I need to go see the band on this tour um, for obvious reasons. But I want to keep up my streak of seeing every tour since Music for the Masses, and so still got to figure out which one that I'm going to go to. Uh, also, uh, postcards have been arriving. When the band made the initial announcement of Memento Mori and the countdown to the countdown that got everybody bummed out, we've all forgot about that at this point in time. The initial sign-up that we got was for a postcard. Now, I have not received mine yet. If you're watching the video on YouTube, you can see the images for yourself. It just includes the the artwork uh, from Memento Mori. I'm looking at a tweet here uh, from an individual who shared the postcard online who wrote, um, Oh, sure, you haven't played a show in New Orleans since 2001, but be sure to remind me to buy your new album, Basil and Bastards. They're joking. But seriously, that was a nice surprise amongst the bills and junk. Thanks for that. So postcards are arriving. Uh, let me know if you receive yours. Talkshownerd at uh, gmail.com. I'm, no, I'm looking forward to getting to mine. Anything to add to my Depeche Mode 
uh, collection. Which, by the way, uh, I hope you follow me, obviously, here on uh, on YouTube. You can see the videos under the shorts, but also on my TikTok and the My Nerd World uh, Instagram, at the My Nerd World. And then on TikTok, you can find me under at the John Justice, J-O-N. But I've been posting short videos up of my uh, Depeche Mode collection. My wife was kind enough to go into the garage, uh, dig out the boxes of my old Depeche Mode stuff, and um, I found some really, um, some really fun surprises in there. I didn't realize, and these are special to me, but I didn't realize that I still had a lot of the promotional flats that um, they would put up inside the record stores. I worked for record stores, Music Plus specifically, um, and for a warehouse for a while. But um, I had collected these flats, so I have a few from uh, the 101 uh, live release, uh, the concert release. I've got uh, Songs of Faith and Devotion and Violator. And I forgot that I actually had an electronic one signed by Johnny Marr and Bernard Sumner on a promotional stop for the World Violation Tour. I also found my um, mini poster flyer for the World Violation Tour. I was bummed that it was kind of in rough shape. I wish I had taken better care of it. Uh, But I've been posting up. Uh, videos of my collection if you're interested in that, just because I've been in a Depeche mood as of late. Of course, the band has been making some live uh, appearances uh, overseas, um, and I have an update from the... I'm going to say this wrong, so I need to make sure that I get this uh, that I get this right. Let me scroll down through the Terratata performance. I have a... Um, I have a live reaction of a friend of the show who had a chance to go to that performance Uh, they also performed on a french tv show and on the italian uh, music competition show and i I watched both the uh the french television show it was yeah it was french uh and i watched the the italian one and it was good um i don't think that dave is very confident singing ghosts again yet um you know i last thing i want to do is say dave sounded pitchy he just didn't seem like he had fully embraced the song completely. As a matter of fact, I think he may have even have missed some lyrics, which has happened before. He may have missed some lyrics on the French television show uh, performance. It could be just a byproduct of the the situation and the venue in which they're singing. I imagine for Dave, it's got to be difficult when you've got kind of a smaller crowd and it's not a concert setting, and he doesn't he can't really like project. Uh, but it is a newer song, and so he may just have a little bit of difficulty uh, singing it. It just didn't sound nearly as clean as the album version does. And typically, Dave, uh, in his his live voice, is usually pretty spot on. It certainly was with um, Personal Jesus, which they performed on the Italian music competition uh, show. So let's move on to a few more items. Um, Billboard tweeted out earlier this week that Ghosts Again hit number one on the uh, Hot Trending Songs chart powered by Twitter. So I don't know how the Billboard charts work as of right now. Like I've been so far removed from that since my days of doing music radio. I don't know how that stuff works. However, um, a few days ago, Ghosts Again had hit number one on the Hot Trends song chart. Uh, and I know that a few days later, it was in the top two or three, I think, on Spotify, if I'm not mistaken amongst a bunch of bands that I had never uh, heard of before. Ghost Again is just a cool song. And I want to take just a moment to talk about that, and then I'll dive into um, the track list details, um, what I've been told, uh, who I've been told wrote which songs. I don't know entirely who is singing which songs. I have my guesses, um, apart from the songs that I've heard that I'll share with you. Uh, But as it relates to Ghosts Again, uh, this song, as I mentioned on last week's show, for me, has no burn at all. It It is the best single that they've put out in my mind since um, Enjoy the Silence. And spending a lot of time with the instrumental version of the album version of Ghost Again, it really, for me, it really enhances the enjoyment even more of the song because you can hear the some of the intricacies that you don't necessarily catch um, on the vocal portions of the of the song, on the instrumental version. It's a really, really powerful song, and it's incredibly layered. And it's just kind of cool 
it's just a really, really cool Depeche Mode track. And and again, to me, it's one of their strongest singles since uh, Enjoy the Silence. I just I can't get enough of that song. I went and created an extended mix. My purpose in creating this mix was to I wanted to create a mix of Ghost Again that was akin to the mixes that we used to get, like the 12-inch ones, the extended mixes that we used to get back in the 80s and early 90s, where it didn't really change the song that much. It just it just extended portions of it. So I took the instrumental version and reworked it with both the radio version and the album version to create, I think it runs like 6 minutes and 50 seconds. Um, it's gotten really good reaction. On uh, on YouTube, if you want to download it without any commercials, if you go to mynerdworld.net and go to the Depeche Mode, the podcast page on that website. On the home page, hit podcasts. You'll end up on the podcast page. Hit there, go to the Depeche Mode page, and you can download the extended mix um, right there off of the uh, off the website. No um, no ads or or anything like that. So um, I spent a couple hours working on that last weekend. So I've been kind of kind of a playlist running of the radio version, the album version, the extended version, and the instrumental. I actually realized that I hadn't listened to much of anything else other than Ghosts again for like the past week. I found some old compilation uh, discs that I made years ago, uh, and I've been listening to those along with the um, the uh, the different versions of, uh, of Ghosts again. So again, head on over to mynerdworld.net, and you can download that uh, version uh, for yourself and... As I mentioned, uh, follow me on Twitter at the My Nerd World, at the My Nerd World on Instagram. You can also follow my um, Instagram at John uh, the John, uh, the John Justice on Instagram, and TikTok is the John Justice as well. All right, so I've made you all wait um, long enough. Let's go. Ahead, let's go ahead and get to um, what I've heard, Memento Mori, and I'll share with you uh, my first thoughts. All right. So as I said earlier, I have not heard all of the I have not heard all of the tracks um, yet. I've heard, uh, eh, I guess, roughly about half the album at this point in time. So I'll run through the songs that I have heard, at least portions of um, Wagging Tongue. Uh, for those that don't know, somebody ended up recording the performance on their phone. They weren't supposed to. So that's the version of Wagging Tongue that I've heard is the one that was floating around that was recorded on somebody's cell phone. It's a little bit difficult to get a to hear it clearly, uh, but I will give you my thoughts on it for those that haven't uh, haven't heard it. Um, I've also heard uh, portions of Don't Say You Love Me, Caroline's Monkey, not an instrumental, and potentially one of the strongest al- tracks on the album next to Ghosts Again. Uh, Before You Drown gave me chills. I'll talk about that. Um, also heard Never Let Me Go, uh, which is... The, it, so far, without hearing the rest of the record, um, Never Let Me Go is the so much love, soothe my soul, soft touch, raw nerve, it's no good um, track from this album. It's that driving Depeche Mode song that we've all come accustomed to that usually lands on every single one of their records. But it's good. It's really good. I'll Again, I'll show you with you my thoughts. Um, and I've had a chance to uh, hear a portion of uh, Speak to Me, the final track on the album. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get back to the beginning of the um, of the record. Along with this, I'll tell you what I've been told, uh, who wrote what songs. So, uh, track one, My Cosmos is Mine. Um, that was, according to my sources, written by Martin. Uh, then we get to Wagging Tongue, which was written by Martin and Dave together. Now, based off of what I heard, that kind of makes sense. I want to share with you an email from friend of the show, um, Rome Ed, who asked... Curious if you've heard the song "The uh, Wagging Tongue." It's been leaked a few times. YouTube removed it five times already. The quality of the song is pretty bad. Yes, it is. I personally like it a lot. I've heard some people saying it's the worst DM song ever, and I've heard a few saying they like it even more than Ghosts Again. Subjectivity of music. At first listen, I thought the song was repetitive, a la a worst crime. Though I love that song, me too. But on a second and third listen, I really like it. Anyways, was curious your take on it. Uh, looking forward to the podcast. Okay, so I've written down uh, the lyrics that I've heard, and I've been wrestling with sharing them on the show. I'm not going to for two reasons. One, uh, I don't want to get hit with a copyright strike on YouTube uh, because that is possible. If you read 
um, copyrighted work, you can get nailed for a copyright strike. And I don't want to do that on, on, on the, uh, for my, for my YouTube channel. Um, on my podcast, if you're listening to it just via the podcast, I can get away with it. But the other part is, too, that I know there's a lot of people that want to kind of be in the dark and they don't want to hear the lyrics just yet. So um, I don't want to have to do spoilers and have you move on through. So for the sake of all of that, I'm not sharing the lyrics. If you're just dying to know the lyrics to some of these songs, I don't have them in their entirety, um, nor are they 100% correct. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I would be perhaps happy to share it with you. But again, I'm not going to say them on the uh, on the show. So as far as wagging tongue is concerned, um, it really is kind of rough to tell based off of the leaked live audio. Based on the other tracks that I've heard, stronger than some, not quite as strong as others. I like the groove. Uh, I'm really interested to hear the tracks that I haven't heard, obviously, just based off of what I've heard off of Wagging Tongue. Um, the live version and poor quality has left me curious. It's got a groove like perfect, uh, but with swagger. <laughs> um, lyrically, it seems pretty sparse and short. It has a breakdown in the middle that was a little hard to hear because the audio quality was so bad that it reminded me a bit of when Wrong kind of breaks down. Um, all of these tracks, though, I will say up front, all of these tracks have me wanting to hear them again, uh, which is something that I couldn't say personally about the totality of Spirit apart from a few tracks. There's one song that, from what I've heard, is a little weak, but I'm not ready to render complete judgment until I hear it in its entirety. Uh, my guess, as it relates to Wagging Tongue, is that My Cosmos is Mine will probably be a typical opening song to the to Memento Mori, meaning something a little bit more epic in scope. And then as we roll into track two, Wagging Tongue is when we is when we settle is when we settle in. Um, what's interesting is that all the song titles, and specifically the ones that were causing so much controversy, they all make sense now. The opening um lyrics to Wagging Tongue and again, I'm not going to read them, but when I, you know, I'm looking at them on the screen and they they make sense. So everybody was kind of freaking out over these weird song titles. They actually make sense. Being that this was written by Martin and Dave, my guess is the wagging tongue line came from Dave. That sounds like something that Dave would say akin to his solo work of things like short and curlies. Um, but again, my my guess is that my cosmos is mine. It's probably a very strong track to open Memento Mori and then wagging tongue kind of. We kind of slide into it because it seems pretty short. I think it ran like three minutes and five seconds. And that was the live version. So um, if it is going to be a second single, which I'm not convinced it will be. When the band performed Delta Machine live on Letterman, I believe they did should be higher. And that ended up being sort of a single down the line. Um, or was it the second? That was the third single, wasn't it? I could be wrong on that. Before I move on to the next track, by the way, let me just uh, let me back up. I missed a portion of my description of the album. Again, having difficulty comparing Memento Mori from what I've heard to previous albums. Production-wise so far, it seems the band has really moved away from the the blues rock that we had been um that we'd come accustomed to. I felt like they kind of started to move away from that on Spirit. Certainly, that was the core of Delta Machine. I mean, that was part of why that album was called that. It was supposed to have this sort of blues-inspired um, tone to it and vibe to it. You're going to hear vibe a lot as I describe these album tracks. This Memento Mori seems kind of a weird hybrid between... Having some emotional depth of Black Celebration with the electronic sound of Exciter and sounds of the universe with a tinge of Violator. It doesn't have the punch of Violator. Like, Violator just stands out to me. That song just sonically just has so much punch to it. And then we get into sort of a the, the, the gritty of Songs of Faith and Devotion by comparison. This seems like a bit of a a hybrid of that, where 
I can definitely feel this black celebration sort of ominous vibe in the background of, of the of the songs that I've heard, but then you've got less clicking than we've had on previous records, and certainly less than Exciter, but still has that electronic angle to it. And then with some of the more experimental tones that we heard on Sounds of the Universe. All of it's good, in my opinion. And again, going back to Ghosts again, listening to the instrumental, especially during some of the parts when Dave sings, when you listen to the instrumental version, there's some really, really interesting keyboard riffs that remind me of World in My Eyes, Enjoy the Silence and Policy of Truth. Like, I'm listening to it, and I'm thinking, man, I, I if it were me, like if I was producing the record, I would bring some of those riffs up. There's a very specific one that's deep in the mix on Ghosts again that really does remind me of Policy of policy of truth and again it really sticks out on the instrumental um and like i said last point here the song titles from what i've heard they all make sense now all right so uh moving on from wagging tongue um of course we have ghost again you know what, what else can be said it's a fantastic track clearly from what i've heard the single of the album um you know barring the other tracks that uh that uh that we you know expect to hear um, that was written by Martin Gore and Richard Butler, as we talked about uh, last week. They only get into Don't Say You Love Me. This was also written by Martin Gore and Richard Butler. S- uh, slow ballad sung by Dave. So when The Body Speaks from Exciter first came to mind, not necessarily because it sounded similar to When The Body Speaks, more of just the pacing, it's got a love themes lyrical vibe as well. I was trying to find tracks that I could compare it to. And also this breathe feel. It's definitely got Martin Gore written all over it. There is a um there's a cadence to the way the to the way the lyrics uh, move. Uh, it almost has a baroque vibe if that makes sense at all and I'm using that appropriately. Uh, I would even go so far as to say it's it's a cross between Love Thieves and In Your Room, but subtle and subdued with um, the the pacing and beats per minute, say, akin to uh, um, Poison Heart from Spirit. Very dramatic, by the way. Uh, lyrically, I'm very, very impressed with all of the lyrics uh, so far on the uh, on the album. Um, and I gotta, let me, I have to, um, do something sort of live here on the show. My track listing, as I'm looking at it, as I've written down here is screwed up. So I need to go back to the original source of, uh, where, here we go. I got my track numbering wrong here. So that's track. So don't say you love me as track four, right? All right. So, and then we go to. Okay, so then we go to My Favorite Stranger, which is five, right? Yep. And then Soul With Me. So My Favorite Stranger is written by Martin Gore and Richard Butler. Hasn't, haven't heard that yet. Then we have Soul With Me, which is written by um, Martin Gore. I haven't heard that one yet. Kind of expecting that to be a Martin Gore solo song. But we'll wait and see. All right. Then we get to, then we get to as my voice cracks, holy cow. Then we get to Caroline's Monkey. Caroline's Monkey, um, written by uh, Richard Butler and uh, Martin Gore. Um, oh, I'm missing a track in here. I didn't put it in the list, did I? Oh, no, there it is. Okay, just making sure I got all of it. All right. So this is what happens when I decide I'm going to do the show live and I don't want to edit. So you get to see me try to work through my mistakes. All right. Caroline's Monkey, written by Martin Gore and Richard Butler. Of all the tracks I've heard, this one I'm most interested in. This is going to sound weird. I imme- and, for, and this is for a couple of different reasons. I immediately thought of The Cure. And I don't think I've ever said that about a Depeche Mode song before. I thought at first it was because of the line, Caroline. So this is this is not an instrumental. This is a, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is a Dave sung track. Um, lyrically, really, really interesting. Pretty dark. Could be about drug use. I was right, though, about the title of Caroline's Monkey. And what I mean by that is when I first saw the title Caroline's Monkey, my thought was if it's not an instrumental, then this is 
the monkey for Caroline is akin to a monkey on Caroline's back, and I'm for the most part right. It doesn't come out directly and say that, but there is, you know, there is a Caroline's monkey, you know, blank, blank, blank. <laughs> so I was right. I felt very proud of myself. I felt like I pulled that one. I, I felt like I was, I, I don't know, I felt accomplished that I actually nailed that. Dave's vocals, I'm going to use this word again. There's a swagger to the vocals on this track, a seductive vibe to them, very smooth. Martin comes in on the chorus with a really nice beat. It's It's got a funky groove to it. It even includes, and this is one of those songs where, oh, man, I can't wait for, 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 you, for you guys to, to hear this, for you to hear this. It even includes a nod to clean. Now, I don't think I'll get in trouble by saying this, but Martin and Dave both sing the line sometimes in the song at the end of a uh, at the end of at least what I've heard of the chorus. And they sing it almost exactly the same way that Martin does on clean, just quieter. Like if it wasn't intentional, th- th- there's no there's no way it wasn't intentional, in my opinion. Now, the other interesting thing to note about this song is that. Getting back to The Cure, listening to it a couple times, it finally landed with me. It's got this weird kinship to Disintegration off of Disintegration. Now, Disintegration is my favorite song off of The Cure's Disintegration album. Caroline's Monkey isn't nearly as bombastic, if you want to call Disintegration bombastic. I mean, Disintegration is an aggressive, it's an aggressive track. Caroline's Monkey isn't that. It's got a kind of a funky groove to it. But there is there's a line in the song that, again, if this was and this was written by Martin Gore and Richard Butler, if this wasn't a tribute to the cure, it it was just sort of a a happy accident because they actually use a line. There's a line in disintegration. So I can't get in trouble for this. But and there's the creatures and everything, you know, just that I love just that driving of the nonstop lyrics from Robert Smith in that song. In Caroline's Monkey, there's a moment where they do that. They use that, they use the everything line. And it, like I heard it, I was like, whoa, that's the cure. So, yeah, I'm excited for, I'm excited for this one. All right, let's move on. Then we get to um, Before We Drown. This song gave me chills. And I got to hand it to Dave. This is allegedly a Dave Peter Gordino and Christian uh, Eigner, uh, Eigner track. This song gave me chills. And and again, hat tip to Dave. It's got a, again, it's got a slower vibe to it, but it it it's building up to something. I haven't heard it in its entirety, but it clearly is building up to something. But this was one of those ones, like Ghosts Again, when I first heard it, I was like, whoa. Um... All of these songs have got an emotional core to them. An emotion and a depth that, in my view, was missing from spirit. So if you were hoping for, in my opinion, again, it's all going to be subjective. You may completely disagree. But if you were hoping for a Depeche Mode album that was going to strike an emotional chord um, and something a little bit more dramatic... I, Memento Mori is gonna is gonna hit that, based off of what I heard, which again is just the songs that I'm sharing with you. But um, before we drown, uh, has some really interesting keyboard work. You get sort of a uh, a chorus, and then we go into a, into a break, and then you got some really interesting keyboard work uh, work happening. And I'll repeat what I said on last week's episode. I really do think that the James Ford and uh, Marta Salongni combination, along with what Dave and Peter and Christian and Martin have all done, um, and the addition of of Richard Butler on some of these tracks, they really have found something special with this with this record. All right, then we get to Never Let Me Go, written by Martin Gore, up tempo, aggressive tar- uh, uh, guitar work, and again, this is the so much love, soothe my soul, soft touch, raw nerve. Uh, but better from what I can hear. The guitar riff reminds me of the the wailing riff in Fragile, Ten- uh, Fragile, Fragile Tension from Sounds of the Universe. <laughs> but more, more in line with the guitar work that we get from Ghost Again. So it's got that, that sort of raw edge to it 
Um, but it really is impressive. Uh, and again, the um, the tempo really does fall in line with the other tracks that I uh, that I mentioned from before, and uh, and lyrically uh, pretty pretty solid. Uh, so um, good track. I wouldn't say it's fantastic, um, but uh, this is that typical sort of. And I think the joke was made, not the joke was made, but when they first put out Ultra for people to listen to, and I believe it was like the record label had heard it, and they heard it's no good. They're like, oh, that sounds like Depeche Mode. So this Never Let Me Go is that that driving, up-tempo Depeche Mode song. Um, then we move on down to Speak To Me, which was written by, or w- at least worked on, uh, Dave, uh, James Ford, and and Marta to close out the album itself. And again, I don't think I, I feel like I, I feel like I missed something. I certainly didn't miss the tracks that I heard. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any tracks off the album. So I can tell you who wrote what based off of what I was told. I'm just pulling up my, I'm pulling it up again. So it's me. Oh, people are good. That's the one that I was missing. People are good. Apparently uh, Martin Gore wrote that. So I was missing one on here. So I knew my, my numbering was off and I couldn't figure out why. So people are good. Haven't heard anything of it written by Martin Gore. All right. Uh, last track on the album, speak to me sung by Dave along and then uh, worked on and written by, uh, with James Ford and Marta Salong me, uh, me according to the, um, the details. Uh, this has, let me see if I can describe this appropriately. Um, my least favorite of the tracks that I've heard closes out the album, um, has a good night lovers vibe vibe, but Dave's voice is really strong, uh, pretty bold, not quiet, but soft and meaningful. The music is deceiving. The music is pretty ominous, but then it's juxtaposed against Dave's soft vocals. It sounds like it could have been from Paper Monsters, specifically um, Stay. I actually went and back and listened to Stay before I recorded this, and I was like, yeah, okay. It definitely is a Dave track. Um, again, I haven't heard this in its entirety yet. Uh, just, well, I haven't heard in its entirely, entirety yet. So I can't really on all of these ones that I've described apart from a wagging tongue and the bad version of it. I really can't tell you in total, um, of these, of these particular tracks. Um, didn't hear the cleanest versions either, but, um, this was the weakest of what I've heard, but it has potential depending on where the song ends up uh, ends up going. But it definitely sounded like it could have been lifted from Paper Monsters. Definitely sounded like a like a Dave track. Um, sounded very close to stay, in my opinion. And you know, I mean, for being an album closer, based off of what I've heard so far, um, yeah, uh, it's. I mean, it's not bad. They're all good. None of them. None of them are bad by by any stretch. So. Again, I am uh, really, really excited uh, for this album. It does seem very different. Um, can't really compare it to any, to specifically to any of the other albums. Um, I know that it doesn't sound like anything off of Playing the Angel, in my opinion, um, or Delta Machine. No, I mean, no, really nothing off of Delta Machine. When, when I keep looking, when I keep going back and thinking what albums does it remind me of, I'm really kind of falling back to Black Celebration, and even older than that, uh, there's moments in these where in these songs that I get, I get you know a some great reward, and even on Ghosts Again, I get Construction tr- Time Again vibes on some of the some of the keyboard work. But the the layering of the tracks, and specifically Caroline's Monkey, there's a, there's a, there's a lot going on, and it just sounds like. And again, I'm repeating myself as I mentioned this last week, but it just it sounds like they took the time and they obviously had the time to really work the songs to get the most out of them. Where there are tracks off of the last several several albums that I think a lot of us have kind of sat back and said, boy, you couldn't have done more with that. Angel comes to mind. I love that song off of Delta Machine, but just it's so sparse. And I think the same thing when it comes to Exciter. I love Exciter, but there's a there's a minimal aspect to it. And while Memento Mori doesn't doesn't sound like say Songs of Faith and Devotion, which is which is beefy, um, and or playing the Angel, which is which is gritty, it's got some depth to it. 
and I'm really excited lyrically by what they've that, by what they've put out here. Uh, I was watching a recent interview just over the course of the past week um, with uh, Martin Gore, who I wish I had the opportunity to interview Martin Gore. I just feel like <laughs> I feel like you get the right person in front of Martin Gore, and it could be such a much better interview because I know he just doesn't like doing those interviews. But he, you know, he talked about how a lot of this stuff was written during the pandemic, and it's clear because there's a dark undertone to a lot of it in a good way though i know for me that's what one of the reasons i like depeche mode so much so all right so there you go we'll see how much trouble i get into for uh, all of that let's uh let's uh, share with you some listener feedback we'll start off with a, a friend of the show who had a chance to uh, cedric had a chance to go to the Terra tata performance i'll share with you uh, share with you his thoughts we'll do this week's fan spotlight this comes from uh, Clara. We'll share you with with you her story, and then we'll run through some uh, listener feedback uh, this week. So first, let's go ahead and uh, start off here. Hi, John. I've just come out of the taping. This is probably my most memorable DM experience ever. The set was the same as in the videos I sent to you. Um, somebody had sent a... Um, if you're watching on, on the YouTube, you can see there was a... Uh, the set list okay um with a uh, central stage surrounded by bleachers arena style no bad seats there we were all so close um i was behind the drums and it's like i could have tapped christian on the sh- on the shoulder wow the bleachers were filled to capacity with 600 of what appeared to be card carrying members of the black swarm depeche was not the only act booked on the show tonight but it was clearly the one that everybody came to see the excitement was palpable uh when uh nagi the host came out to say hi before the taping began he said it really feels like something special is going to happen here tonight savor it he was right also he confirmed that the show will indeed air on the release date of the album and that meant they could play tracks from memento mori so i don't know how to say this without sounding too smug but i just heard wagging tongue performed live Live. When the first notes were heard, uh, there were uh, three seconds of slight confusion with the audience before we all figured out that it was a new song. The collective roar of delight that ensued must have been heard blocks away. It was just wild. I wish I could have taken notes, but zero devices allowed in studio. But it's a gorgeous song. Dave's voice is uh, was stunning. I won't really try and describe the song, but I heard things that reminded me both of Dave's solo work. Uh, and of uh, very Depeche rhythms and melodies, somehow reminding me of songs of faith and devotion and a broken frame. Yes, at the same time. I obviously need more listens to get a better idea. Oh, and the lyrics, too, are very Depeche. Again, I'm going to hold that off because I don't want to get busted here on YouTube. Uh, As Dave said, if Fletch was still around, he would have complained too many songs about death on the album. Um, I would have wished for more songs, for more everything, But there was a long interview segment after. We know that this is probably not the boys' favorite thing, but they were funny and graceful, explaining how the passing of Fletch gave new meaning to some of the songs. Tonight, I feel privileged and happy to have seen Depeche really enjoy themselves. Playing to an audience of rabid fans, fans, it was really special. Cheers, uh, Cedric. Uh, And Cedric, again, thank you so much uh, for sharing sharing that with us. Um, Really cool. And that's just awesome. Um, I think I speak for uh, the fans of the show listening that, uh, you know, I know for me, whenever I whenever I hear of a fan that gets to go and do something special like that, it just makes that just makes me happy. And so that's uh, that's truly awesome, Cedric. Thank you so much. All right. Let's go to this week's uh, fan spotlight. So what I decided to do was um, as there's so much content to discuss on the show, I've received so many of your stories that each week. Um, I'm going to have a fan spotlight. Now, this may expand further as you continue to share your stories here on uh, Depeche Mode, the uh, the podcast. But for now, as we have things to talk about every single week, I'll pick one story out a week and share it in the Depeche Mode fan spotlight. This week, it comes from uh, Clara. Clara writes, I'd like to start this email by saying that if I had to remember one of the best things I discovered in 2022, your YouTube podcast is one of them. And I really thank you because it's a pleasure to listen to it every week where I when I go to the city uh, and where I study. uh, Thank you uh, so much. That's (laughs) that's really cool. And I I really appreciate you, uh, uh, your kind words. Uh, My story with DM could be very long, although I'm 
part of the most recent branch of fans, those in the 2000s, which is why I chose this one. In fact, according to my mother, I started to develop an obsession at age three to four years old by demanding to watch almost every night what I called The Rose in reference to The Best of Volume 1 from 2006. We still wonder if Volume 2 will ever be released. Don't ask me why I preferred to directly throw away the artists of my youth, Justin Bieber, One Direction, etc., and turn to a group of which I uh, could not know the youth to my uh, to my great despair always, but life decided so, I suppose. So I was a little girl. I have always been an admirer of the band, especially of Alan Wilder, for whom I will always have a particular affection when it comes to his work within DM. But that doesn't prevent me from appreciating a lot of the albums that have been released since his departure. So when I was younger... I started my own collection around eight years old, buying their albums, remastered at first, and then uh, the collection has not stopped growing, despite my budget not allowing me to get my hands on some items. One of the most beautiful possessions being an artwork signed by Brian Griffin from the cover of the 1984 compilation People Are People, which which can still be found on the Internet today. For many people who have been around me, it is sometimes difficult to understand the attachment to the band and why most of their songs move me so much, like my favorite, Shake the Disease. Thumbs up to that. And it was very difficult, in addition to family problems, to endure being rejected in elementary school by others just because I didn't fit in with them. Nevertheless, I never let go of what my mother, um, I never let go of what, with my mother, saved my life. Because I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't been there somewhere. I was able to attend my first concert in 2017, though I didn't think it would be the only time I would see Andrew. His death affected me a lot, like most fans, and made me realize that I had to complete the biggest project of my life, to do a world tour dedicated to DM. And so I scoured the internet, looking for any address to add to my address book. I'm very proud of it. As proof, I was able to go back to London for my 20th birthday at the end of January and started my project in earnest. I can't describe the feeling of having been to the Blackwing Studios. The tear flowed all by themselves, and I went also for the first time to Basilton. The boys were right. Hoping my email wasn't too long, absolutely not. And I want to say that I can't wait to listen to this new album, which will be released in, in the uh, which will be released in the meantime, and go back to see them in Lyon and Bordeaux this summer. Hope I said that right. Being in France. Today I'm proud of what makes me uh, different more than ever, and I know I owe them a lot. It's always nice to hear people calling me the Depeche Mode girl because one of my tattoos dedicated to the Rose Bowl concert. Hoping uh, for the best for you and your loved ones in this year, 2023. I look forward to listening to your other podcasts, both Depeche Mode and Star Wars, two of the best things ever. Nice. Thank you very much for your interest in my email. Best of regards from France, Clara. Clara, thank you uh, so much for uh, for sharing your story. I, I know I really did appreciate it, and I know uh, you listening appreciated that as well. Just so cool. All right, let's get to listener feedback. CGH says, I've been listening to Ghosts Again constantly since it's been released. And yes, definitely the best single since Precious, though Wrong was pretty decent as well. I agree. Thank you. Virtuoso DM says, their song titles are reflective of their music. Enigmatic, non-contrived, artistic, equal, brilliant art. Thank you. Friend of the show for the, uh, for, for the, uh, for the email. A friend of the show, Stephanie, writes, I think I've already told my Depeche Mode story. But maybe it's interesting to hear me go back to the beginning. My moment of falling in love with this band was listening to Violator on vinyl. That's why I got a record player and the vinyl. I found a bunch of my old Depeche Mode vinyl. I'm going to have to go and get a record player now, much to my wife's chagrin. Modern media are great and have their justification, but I want to create time for myself and my music and be able to enjoy it again much more than the dull MP3. Times are tough. Terrible news reaches us daily from everywhere. Depeche Mode on the, rec- on the record player, world off. That's how I want to keep it. I'm curious if the new album will blow us away like ghosts again. I think so, based off of what I've heard. I hope you're healthy. I am. Although I did fall yesterday. The weather here has been nasty. <laughs> so it got warm, and then it got cold again. And so a bunch of the snow that had fallen over the course of winter, which was a lot, 
melted, but then it turned to ice. I was walking the dog. I almost got home safely, and then I slipped and fell. So I'm fine. I think I just pulled my calf muscle. Could have been a lot worse. My dog was freaked out, though. Artemis is the best. Um, Go check out my Instagram feed. You'll see how much I love my dog. Uh, I hope you're healthy, having a good time. (laughs) Yes, the best regards uh, from Germany, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie, as always. And I'm going to probably get this wrong. Last name is Hinkle, but first name is, I want to say Juan. It's J-A-U-H-N, but maybe it's pronounced Jean. If it is, that's a really cool way to spell it. So let me know. Uh, Write me back and give me the pronunciation on that. Not sure who won the game, uh, the chess game in the video for Anton Corbin. Not a big chess player. Um, without this, it's hard to decide who's going to be the last Beatle crossing Abbey Road with no shoes. Also, looks like Anton's photography, was it? Yes. Final thought for uh, for sure. A tip of the hat to the uh, Infant Bergman important, important film that is always referenced in film school, but hard to watch. Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Songs, okay. Cool to see Martin's face ravaged by time without much vanity. And in the end, I think he'll be considered the heart and soul of the storied band so many of us love. Hiccups and all. Yeah, Seventh Seal, right? This was the Bergman film that um, that uh, everybody keeps referencing. I haven't seen it, that everybody keeps referencing as it relates to uh, the video for Ghosts Again. So thank you for that. Richard uh, Littler writes, just wanted to send a message saying how much I'm enjoying your show. Thank you. Relatively new to DM. Been a fan since 2009, but I've seen their last two tours in Manchester. Nice. And we'll see them in Helsinki this summer. I also met Alan Wilder a few years ago. Nice guy. I'm originally from the UK, but moved to Finland a few years ago. I'm really enjoying Ghosts again and look forward to the new album. I missed out on the signed vinyl, but have ordered the red vinyl and cassette and the deluxe CD. I recently rediscovered Spirit after giving it a listen after a few years. I prefer it to Delta Machine production-wise. I do, too. I see 87 to, uh, 86 through 97 as their imperial phase, but I think there's something to be taken from all of their albums, old and new. I'm hoping to visit Minneapolis one day. I'm a huge Prince fan. Nice. And I've always wanted to visit Paisley Park. Thanks again. Yeah, unfortunately, I haven't been, and I certainly didn't get a chance to go before he passed. I arrived shortly uh, after that. Um, David Thiefold writes, uh, started to listen to your podcast last week. I'm definitely a new listener for life. Thank you. 51 years old. I've been a Mode fan since I saw People Are People on MTV for the first time in the early 80s. They are my God and my religion. Just like everybody else, they've gotten me through everything decade after decade. The new single is absolutely amazing and definitely the best single since Precious, probably even better. I remember... When playing The Angel came out, and I always loved Precious. But in 2009, my mom died of cancer, and that song just hit different. I never cried when it first came out, but after my mom died, I cried every time. Those lyrics just hit home to me, and now I call that that my mom's song. I post it every year on her birthday, all on my social media platforms. Now, fast forward to Ghosts again. My grandmother died the day after Christmas last year, and I just got the news that my pops may have a year left. Cancer again. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that, David. I put Ghosts again on yesterday and lost my you-know-what. Now, this song hit me in a way like Precious did and came out at the perfect time. I'm going to need Depeche Mode desperately in these coming months, and I think Ghosts again is absolutely magical and what I need in my life. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for... Sharing, David. And, um, yeah, you'll certainly be in my prayers. Bong13 writes, Stunning, emotional, been a fan since Black Celebration Tour. I felt the mu- um, I felt the music since. Helped me through many uh, of life's moments, from family losses to the big C. Always loving their output and invest emotionally every time. Can't wait for the Twickenham concert, uh, UK concert. Thank you, Bong. Eric Pickett writes, Uh, Just subscribe. I'm a big fan of Depeche Mode and have been since 1990. I'll be going to my first Depeche Mode show in Las Vegas. Their music has gotten me through the death of my mom four months after Fletch's passing. Thank you for the Depeche Mode news and views. Thank you, Eric. Um, Chrysalis2735 says, Best video of theirs ever, and anyone in the OGDM fan clubs will be in tears and moved beyond words by this one which is what DM has always been the masters of, R.I.P. Fletcher. Thank you for that. Olaf writes, I've been following for years. Love your podcast. Thank you, Olaf. 
Maybe you already know, but someone in the Swedish DM group posted details on who wrote the specific songs of Memento Mori. See attachment, and that's what I used on the show. Thank you, Olaf. I'm glad I got back to that. That's where I got the who wrote what. I'm listening to Ghosts again and again. There's nothing I don't like about it. It's so nice with a Depeche Mode song and again, that just lifts you and carries you through all the songs. So grateful to, again, feel that about a DM song. Looking forward to your next cast. P.S. I really hoped we would get the full single right away with all six edits, uh, edits of Ghosts again and the power of love and hate as was rumored, but they started a countdown again. You know, I need to look. I haven't even, you know what, since we'll just do this live. Besides, my wife just texted that she's going to Cub, so I should probably let her know. This is what happens when I do the show like I do my radio show. Uh, I'm going to give my wife a thumbs up. And I'm going to go into my music app just to see in the off chance that they posted the single for Ghosts again. Let's see. Uh, doesn't look like it. Okay. Next up, uh, BRFTS2001 says, Sorry, I st I'm still not feeling it. A big fan of the Alan Wilder area of these guys, and I feel like it's missing some sonic atmosphere and layering from that era. This sounds too minimalistic, minimalistic and lightweight. I do appreciate the fact that they're trying to be more synth pop like the old days and not the electro blues sounds uh, like on recent records. And I think that's what I meant. To, I don't know what I was saying earlier. Was I saying electro blues? Blues rock? I forgot how I was describing it. I don't think I was describing it the way that I wanted to. Yes, that's what I meant, though, what he wrote. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Let's see what the rest of the album brings. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to be feeling the rest of the album if you don't like Ghosts again. I'm telling you, listen to the instrumental version if you can, uh, or download my extended mix because I added in a lot of those parts that I was talking about. Uh, it really is a lot more layered than I think a lot of people um, realize. All right, a couple more. Uh, let's see. Been enjoying your podcast in the run up to the release of Ghosts. I found it interesting you comparing singles from Ghost to Violator. You na oh yeah, this, this is funny. So you nailed all the first singles until you named Enjoy the Silence. It was Personal Jesus as the first single, but I completely understand the comparisons about feeling so uh, about feeling that way that you forgot about personal Jesus. Actually, I didn't. So when I was describing it, I knew that personal Jesus came out beforehand, but there was such a distance. At least it felt like, and I may have covered this on last week's show. Maybe this is, maybe I did this one too. Um. So yes, I knew that personal Jesus came first, but that personal Jesus sat separate from violator in my mind for some reason. So I, I was factually inaccurate. So, but then they go on to say, and thank you for the coverage here. Uh, let's be honest, Violator is enjoy the silence. No, you're absolutely right. All right, last one comes from Nick. Nick writes this. Uh, my name is Nick, and I'm from Evanston, Illinois. I really enjoy listening to your Depeche podcast. Thank you. You are a true fan, and I appreciate all the detail you put into each podcast. Uh, it's great listening because you think about the same details of the band that I have thought about for years. I think we're around the same age. I first saw the band on the World Violation Tour and have seen them 12 times since. Do you listen to Have Any Bootlegs? Yes, I do. Uh, I have a lot, and when I used to listen to Depeche, it was mostly the live shows I have. The two Violator soundboards are among my favorite my favorites. Um, I wish there were more or the band would release an official show from that tour. I think we all do, and I agree with you. It's their best era of the band. Um, another show I enjoy is the Levin, Levine, uh, of 93 from the devotional tour. I think it's a two CDR in house that I got in the trade years ago. It sounds incredible. And it's the full show. You might have it. Don't have that one, but I'd be happy to send you a copy. Anyway, if you ever have guests in the pro podcast, which I am planning on doing a lot of, it just comes down to timing. Um, I am planning on having guests in the podcast, so I'll definitely keep you in mind. Uh, Nick. Yeah, I have, um, I've got a world violation one, a couple of world violation ones, actually. They weren't soundboard mixes, though, but not bad for being audience recordings. Uh, some of the favorite bootlegs that I have are from the K-Rock Acoustic Christmas shows. Uh, and I can't remember what year it was. I want to say 2003 K-Rock Acoustic Christmas. Um, I think it was right around there. Uh, the... The the versions of the songs they played on that one were just absolutely spectacular. So, all right. Boy, I made it in under an hour. I wasn't sure how long today's show was going to be. I knew it was going to be long. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, man, I wish that I could 
I wish I could share with you what I've heard because uh, it has me really, really excited. Um, and boy, that Caroline's monkey just keeps <laughs> just keeps popping back into my head. I'm dying. I am dying to have to hear conversations about that song. Just because it really is the first time that I've ever felt that felt Depeche teeter that close to being aligned with The Cure. I know they're in the same sort. You know, we 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 consider Cure and Depeche mode not from a music standpoint, maybe lyrically to a certain extent, certainly disintegration. But you know, the era, right? The Cure and Depeche mode, and you know, you kind of you know, I remember back in the day, you fell into one camp or the other. It was kind of like Star Wars and Star Trek. But Caroline's Monkey just. I don't know. That song is really sticking with me, and it has me kind of giddy, if you can't tell. I'm not really making much sense. All right. I'm going to wrap things up. I've got to work on my other show. I've got to piece this together now that it's done. Um, Talkshownerd at gmail.com. As always, if you like science fiction, um, I hope you'll check out my science fiction space opera series. Um, Follow a ragtag squadron of pilots and one reluctant hero on a journey across the galaxy as they fight for... Uh, survival among the stars. Uh, again, it's great for ages 11 plus. Uh, set in the future where air and space flight culture has replaced car culture. Uh, book number four in the series is Gone Corbin and the Asteroid of Misfortune. Uh, Gone Corbin barely survived the evacuation of Earth. Now the former rock star turned interstellar messenger is trying to find his place in the universe. During an interstellar war, which takes place in book three, The Vanishing War, between the newly colonized planets, Gon Corbin and his sar- sarcastic AI companion, Alex, end up marooned on a massive asteroid with a wrecked ship. At first, they are alone, but when stra- stragglers from the war arrive, he wishes that they were. So that's book four. Um, book one is what you want to start off with um, in the series. Inspired in part by Depeche Mode, the f- central character of the story is a Depeche Mode fan, even though it's set in the future. In the story itself, uh, the music of the 80s through through the 2000s is nostalgic. And I included a bunch of direct and indirect references to to, to Depeche Mode throughout the story, including the underlying themes of love. And, and it's got action and spaceships and stuff blowing up. All the things that I love about science fiction. So I hope you go to MyNerdWorld.net and check it out or go to Amazon.com. Uh, search for John, J-O-N, uh, Justice. Available in audiobook narrated by me, ebook, hardcover, and paperback. All right. We got a lot to talk about over the course of the next year, and I look forward to hearing from you. Talk show nerd at gmail uh, dot com. Thank you so much for checking out the show. I enjoyed it as much as I did recording it, and I'll talk to you guys again next week. Bye. My nerd.